In this video, I'll show you how you can make your flat looking footage go from this to this with advanced color grading all inside Premiere Pro. You will learn professional color grading techniques, adding halation, bloom, film grain to your footage without using any kind of extra plugins or whatsoever. I primarily use the Vinci Resolve for all my professional and commercial color grading projects. And today I'll try to apply a lot of that knowledge in Premiere Pro as well. When it comes to color grading, a lot of people consider Premiere Pro as an inferior software than the Vinci Resolve. But I think if you know the basic concepts of color grading, then you can apply that knowledge in any color grading software and achieve amazing looking results. But before getting started, let me clarify that I'm assuming that you know the basic concepts of Lumetri Color and you know how to use each of the tools that are available in the Lumetri Color panel. In this video, I'm not gonna explain each and every tool in detail because I have already explained them in a previous video. So if you're interested in learning how each of these tools work in much more detail, then you can check out my previous videos. In this video, you'll get a lot of ideas instead. You need to understand the basic concepts and the thought process behind each and every decision that I would take to color grade my footage and apply that knowledge to your footage as per your requirement. So without further ado, let's fire up Premiere and see what we can achieve with just Premiere Pro. So here I have opened up Premiere Pro and I have this clip imported over here. This is a raw footage that I have shot with my Sony ZV-10 that I'm using right now to capture this footage as well. So the footage was captured in S-Log2 along with the ITU709 matrix color gamut. So as you can see, this is the raw footage. And as I've used the ITU709 matrix color gamut, so we can't convert this properly in Premiere Pro with any LUT or anything. So we have to add the contrast and the saturation manually. You can see the scopes over here as I have shot the footage in S-Log2. So the dynamic range is maintained properly and the color information is also there. So for all the Sony cameras that capture 8-bit footage only, you can use this setting to get the benefit of the extended dynamic range of S-Log2 and also get amazing colors without getting any kind of banding issue. So that's why I've used S-Log2 along with the ITU709 color gamut, which is essentially a version of Rec709. So here, the first thing that I need to do is to add some contrast. And to add contrast, you can use the basic correction tools. So you can directly add contrast with the contrast slider. You can use the highlights, shadows, whites, and the black sliders as well to add some contrast. But I wouldn't use these sliders and use the curves instead because I'm more comfortable using the curves. So let me put the black point here. I'm looking at the scopes and I need to put the highlights to around the 100 IRE mark. And to do that, I can take this white point and bring it to the left. I can also create a slight S curve to add some contrast. It's looking pretty good. So this was the before and this is the after. I have to increase the saturation as well. So around 130 would be good enough. And as you can see, this is not a proper conversion. So the colors are looking a bit funky, especially the yellow colors are being boosted a lot. So we can control that with the hue versus saturation curve. All you have to do is take this eyedropper tool, press control. So it will consider a larger area to sample the color. So let's select this yellow color and let's decrease the saturation a bit. So before it was looking like this and after decreasing the saturation of the yellow channel, it's looking pretty good. The footage is already pretty well shot, so we don't have to do much. So let's rename this Lumetri Color Adjustment to Basic Correction. Okay, I don't like the color of the shirt that much. So if I want to change the color of the shirt, then I can take this eyedropper in the Hue versus Hue Curve section and I can pick a color and I can change the color of the shirt. I can extend the selection to affect the other color of the shirt as well. So somewhere around here, I think it's looking pretty good. I can bring down the exposure of these colors as well as I think the shirt is a bit bright and our attention is not going directly towards my face because the face and the shirt are exposed quite evenly. So what I can do is I can take the color of the shirt in the hue versus luma section and I can bring down the luma or the brightness of these colors to make my shirt look a bit dark. So this was the before and this is the after. Right. So now the shirt is looking quite good. We can create a vignette to place the focus even more on my face. So we will do that next. To add a vignette, I can add another Lumetri color effect. And I want to add the vignette before the basic correction. So I drag this Lumetri color effect on top of the previous one. And let's rename this to vignette. And in this Lumetri color panel, I can take this circular mask and create an ellipse over my face like this. I have to feather the mask a bit. So around, I think 
350 would be good enough and I have to invert the mask so that the correction inside this lumetri color doesn't apply inside the mask instead it should be applied outside the mask so if I go to this lumetri color adjustment named vignette and if I bring up the exposure then you can see the effect is being applied inside the mask but we want the effect to be applied outside the mask so that's why we have to check this inverted option now the effect of the curve is being applied outside this mask so let's reset this because we don't want to boost the brightness rather we want to decrease it so that the focus directly goes to my face so this was the before and this is the after now I think this side of my face is looking a bit underexposed and too dark to my liking. So we can bring up the exposure of these shadow parts separately. So to do that, we can add another Lumetri color adjustment. And I want to add this Lumetri color before the basic correction as well. And let's rename this to face shadows. So let's take the face shadows Lumetri color adjustment and let's go to the HSL secondary tab. Here I can turn off the hue and saturation sliders because I just want to select the shadow area so we can do that with the luminance range. So let's try to select only the shadow portion. So I have to increase the range a bit and let's feather it out. So you can see only the shadows are being selected here and I want to apply the effect only onto my face and not on these portions. So I can limit the adjustments to this portion as well by creating a mask. So let's create this mask on this side. Increase the feather a bit around 250 would be good enough and let's rotate the mask like this. So now you can see it's only selecting the shadow portions. And now with the correction tools, I can go to this option to affect the shadows, midtones and highlights separately. I just want to increase the brightness of the shadows. So I can do that with this slider and I can also bring up the midtones a bit and the highlights as well. This is looking a bit too much. So let's bring down the shadows a bit and the midtones a bit. So without this face shadows lumetri color adjustment, it was looking like this. And after adding this, this is looking something like this. And I don't have to do anything else. I can just refine the mask with this denoise and blur sliders to make the transitions a bit smooth. So this was before and this is after. Now it's looking pretty good. If I want, I can take another lumetri color adjustment and bring that up before the basic corrections. And I can create another mask to bring up the overall exposure of my face. So around 200 feather would be good enough. And let's rename this to face. And if I go to this lumetri adjustment, then in the curve section, I can just brighten the face a bit more. I can add a bit of contrast to the face separately. So without this adjustment, this was the before. And after adding this, this has enhanced the face even more. If I go full screen, you can see it properly. Now if I go to the basic correction, okay, so I had misspelled it. So let's fix this. So now it's good. Now if I go back to this basic correction and if I open up the Lumetri scopes, then I can add a bit more contrast to the overall image. So let's see what we have done till now. So this was the raw footage and we added a basic correction. Then we added a vignette. Then we brightened up the shadows of the face and also added a mask to brighten up the face separately. So this is the overall correction that we have done so far. And it's already looking pretty good to my eyes. Now let's see how we can take this to another level. Till now what I have done is part of color correction. Now we will try to add some cinematic touches and a few elements of film look are glow, halation and film grain. So let's try to add some glow over the footage. So I would like to add a glow on this lamp and another glow on this lamp. So to do that, I can create an adjustment layer. Let's rename it to glow. Let's bring it over here. And now what we can do is we can search for the Gaussian blur effect and drag this on top of the adjustment layer. Now we can blur the footage to around 25 and we can change the blend mode to screen. But we want the glow only on top of the lamps. So to do that, we have to create two masks within this opacity option. So we can create a mask with this ellipse tool. We can create something like this. Let's feather it up to around 500 and we can create another mask over here and we can feather it up as well to around 500. So without the glow, this was the before. And after adding the glow, this is looking something like this. I would also like to add some colors to the glow and to do that, I can create a Lumetri color adjustment and let's rename it to glow one for this lamp. And we can create a mask on top of this lamp so that the effect of this Lumetri color is only constrained to this section. And with the color wheels, we can add some cyan to this section. 
I have to check the mask of the opacities so that it affects this entire range. So I can increase the size of the mask a bit. And then if I go back to this glow one and add some more cyan, I can also bring down the shadows and bring up the highlights. So without this effect, this was the before and after adding it, this is how it is looking now. Let's fit the window to the entire screen. So this was the before and this is the after. And similarly, I can add another glow by adding another Lumetri color and let's create another mask over this lamp. Let's rename this Lumetri color to glow 2. Now similarly, let's try to add some warm colors on this glow too. So we can add the warm colors in the highlights, in the mid tones and in the shadows as well. I'm adding slightly reddish colors in the shadows, some warm colors in the mid tones and some yellows in the highlights. And similar to the previous one, I can decrease the shadows, increase the highlights and the mid tones. I can decrease the shadows even more. So this was the before and this is the after. It's adding quite a nice glow to this lamp, right? I think I can adjust the mask of the opacity a bit more so that it affects the image a bit more and for this glow as well, right? The effect of this mask is also being applied over to the highlights of my face as well. So it's looking pretty good. So this was the before and after adding the glow, this is looking something like this. If I go full screen, so you can see this is the effect. I will add some final touches at the very end as well. So now let's go back to the face adjustments and try to bring up the exposure a bit more because I think after adding the glow, it's looking a bit dull. Now it's looking pretty good. So this is how it's looking in the full screen. Now let me show you how you can add some halogen to the entire footage. So to do that, you can create another adjustment layer. Let's rename it to halogen, drag this on top. Then let's select this adjustment layer and go to its curves. And from this section, you can just bring down the green and the blue channel. So all you are left with the red channel. Now you can just go to this creative section and bring down the sharpness. And then you can change the blend mode of this adjustment layer to lighten. So you can see this is adding a nice halogen to your footage. So without the halogen, you can check out this section. So this was the before without any halogen. And after adding the halogen, you can see with this technique, you can add a really nice halogen to your footage. This is looking absolutely beautiful, right? And now on top of everything, I can add another adjustment layer and do some final adjustments. Let's call this color grading. Let's bring this on top of the footage. Here you can go ahead and do whatever you like. So suppose I want to color grade with the color wheels. I can add some warmth to the highlights and some cool tones to my shadows and some oranges in the mid tones. So this was the before and this is the after. I can go for a slightly different cool color for the shadows. I can add more contrast if I want a more contrast image. For the color grading, you need to do slight adjustments. I can balance the saturation levels with this saturation versus saturation curve. And to do that, I can bring up the saturation of the low saturated pixels and bring down the saturation of the highly saturated pixels. And if I open up the Lumetri scopes, then in this vector scope, you can see before these colors were going out of this broadcast safe range. And with this curve, I can balance the saturation level pretty nicely. So I'm trying to decrease the saturation of the highly saturated pixels with this point and bringing up the saturation of the low saturated pixels with this slider. So this was the before and this is the after. I can add another vignette as well. And to add the vignette, I need to decrease the amount to the extreme and the feather to the extreme. So I can see the vignette properly. Now I can adjust the midpoint and the roundness as per my footage. So around 50 for the roundness and around 65 for the midpoint is looking quite good. Now I can bring up the feather to around 70 and then I can adjust the amount to my liking. Minus one is looking quite good. Here I don't have to do anything in the HSL secondary because the skin tone is looking quite good. Now if I want, I can sharpen the footage to around 30 is looking good. And if you prefer faded looks, then you can use this faded film slider to add some fade to the black points. But nowadays I don't like faded looks, so let me keep it at zero. Now here I don't have to do anything else. All I'm left with is adding some nice film grain to the footage. So now let me quickly show you how you can create amazing looking film grains all inside Premiere Pro. So to create a film grain, let's create a color mat and for the hex code, put in 808080 for a neutral 50% gray. Press OK and let's name it to film grain. 
now bring this on top now let's go to the effects library and let's search for noise and in this noise and grain section you will find this noise effect just drag it on top of the color mat now go to the effects control and let's crank up the amount to around 15 percent you can see this is adding a noise but we don't want this color noise that you get in digital footage by using extreme high ISO values which doesn't look good. So we have to uncheck this use color noise checkbox and it will remove the color noise and give you this monochromatic film grain like noise. We can also add a bit of Gaussian blur to the noise to make it look even more cinematic. A blurness amount of around 3 would be good enough. Now you can see this is looking pretty good and all I have to do is change the blend mode to overlay. So this is how you can add film grain to your footage inside Premiere Pro. If you think the film grain amount is too much then you can control that with the opacity slider. So around 50% will look good. So if I turn off all the effects, this was the before the raw footage and after doing all these adjustments, this is what you are getting. Again, let me tell you, you don't have to copy the exact same steps that I have done here. You just have to understand the concepts and the ideas that you can implement onto your footage according to the requirements of your footage. Here I have just shown you how you can use the masks and more than one lumetri color adjustments to selectively color correct each portion of the image and add glow, halation and film grain to your footage all inside Premiere Pro to get amazing film look characteristics on your footage. I would also like to mention that as my footage was shot properly, the white balance was to the point. But if you get some footage where the white balance is off or the skin tone is off, then in that case, you may have to adjust the white balance manually and also correct the skin tones manually with the hue versus hue and the hue versus saturation curves and for the white balance you can fix that with the white balance sliders this temperature and this tint sliders or you can fix the white balance manually with curves or color wheels whichever you prefer but you have to fix those things with whichever tool you prefer so i hope you have learned something new today if you have liked the video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel right now for more amazing contents